as I go over the stuff that I saw, I've been doing this with every team, and it's, and it's almost like everything is consistent throughout the organization. It's all really good. It's all really impressive. These are little fine points that will help you guys have more success as you continue to go up the ladder through high school and hopefully to the next level. But here's what I'm seeing overall. We want to make sure that we get our legs into the swing. Got to have strong legs. So everybody's focused on loading, which is good. And we want to make sure that we get that load going soon enough. So you need to find timing as quickly as possible, no matter if you're getting soft toss, coaches BP, hitting off a machine, doesn't matter. Or in a game, you have to find the timing as soon as possible. Here, here is the, the, there's the facts. Your timing, if you're trying to hit it through the middle, is going to be off about 70% of the time. You're going to be early, a little early or a little late. Okay? So if we're a little early, we hit the ball to left where we pull it. If we're a little late, we hit the ball in the opposite field. So the reason we think middle is not because the ball has to go middle, it's because we want to create a swing path to where our barrel stays on the plane of the ball as long as possible, okay? But if our timing's off, it doesn't matter what our approach is, what our plan is, what our swing, how pretty it is, we're gonna have a really hard time, okay? So we have to figure out when we need to start the load to start the weight shift, to start the swing, so that we can have the most power and be in good position on off-speed pitches as well, right? So, if you're flipping, a lot of times I would see guys not really move until the ball was almost ready to be released. So you'd start your load, and then you'd get stuck back here to where you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to use your legs for power. So you gotta make sure that you start in time going back, okay? And you wanna make sure that you get a pretty good load going back. I mean, not crazy to where we're stuck and we're hanging, but if you only use a little load, it's similar to pitching as to barely rocking back and barely following through and then trying to throw hard. Or if we rock back and load and swing from our backside, it's like a pitcher rocking back and throwing and not following through. So we want to make sure that we get that load going and we get that weight shift going back through towards the pitcher, but as we still hit it through the middle, okay? So we don't want to get out and just swing and swing early, but I saw a lot of guys catching the ball deep back here to where you're forcing the ball the other way. So we want to make sure that the reason the ball goes to opposite field it's just because our timing's off and it's a hair late, especially in soft toss positions, okay? So make sure you load in time, weight shift in time, and start your swing in time to hit it through the middle, okay? Now, next thing to maximize power, we have to be loose with our arms. So what's supposed to be tight in our upper body in order to stay loose with our arms? Abs, stomach tight. So when we take a swing and we have an abrupt stop back here, that's a sign of tension in our arms and our upper body, which means we have a tendency to drag or get in and out, but we lose power. So a drill that we're doing is finishing with both hands on the neck every swing. Just a drill. Soft toss, T, coaches BP, you should practice this. Spend five minutes a day practicing. If you have recoil on a swing, that's tension. You're gonna cost yourself power and you're gonna be inconsistent with contact, okay? So practice finishing on the neck every time to where you chill here and you're not tight up here, okay? Now, here's the biggest thing. This is kind of a, it's been a little magic pill that I've been telling guys for about the last two weeks that I can't believe the response that I've gotten. And I started, I can give you the long story, but I'll give you the short story. It had to do with Edwin Encarnacion 
in the month of May hit 16 home runs. Hotter than I've ever seen anybody in my whole career. And then watching Dustin Pedroia and Ryan Braun take their practice swings in the on-deck circle, doing this right here. And I was like, golly, that is really cool. And so I got to study Eddie a lot, and I watched him, you know, when we worked in the cage and everything. And he was always doing this with his hands. This is what he was always doing. So he'd get in here, and he was doing this while the pitcher's getting ready. He'd do it in the cage when he was hitting off the tee. And I love this because hands and arms, independent, no shoulders, knob, down and through but it was exaggerated the way he was doing this. So you have to watch him this year. And Pedroia and Braun, really good high ball hitters and really good at handling the pitches in, which handling the pitch in is really difficult. So as I've been studying this, I was like, and it eats at me all the time when I can't figure stuff out. And I just said, forget it. I'm just gonna tell some kids the last couple of weeks I probably told 30 kids from little all the way to camp. And my own son, the last two weeks, I have seen him do things with pitches in and up that have blown me away. And it's all because all I've told him, and you're gonna hear it on the video, was take the barrel of the bat past the side of your head when you start. So when you load and you start to go, if you take the barrel here, now the hands have to stay short. They don't cast. And the barrel doesn't drop and go this way because we're thinking about the barrel coming past the head. So everything stays above the ball to where we can backspin. So I'm real good at kind of baiting hitters when I soft toss. I'll like stay down, 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 down. And then I'll go boom, I'll, I'll try and trick them up to where I'll get this one every time. And especially with Cam, and I know his tendencies, and I can tie him up in, he hates in. And all I told him was, barrel past the head, don't let yourself pull the ball. And so he would go, boom, boom, boom. I'd elevate, and he'd go, whack, and rifle it right past my head. And I was like, holy crap. And his eyes were like this big, because he knew he could never get to that pitch. And then I'd try and sneak it in, and he'd go, what? And it'd go, Phew. and I'm like, oh my gosh, he's never been able to pull that pitch like that. But he's trying not to. So, you know, when I say think middle, it's not because the ball has to go there, it's just because it creates the right path. And so, something that helps is this, and if we can finish here, to keep the tension out, now we got power. So, load, weight shift sooner. And I, you'll hear me say on there, get your weight shift going sooner. More weight shift, more, because I don't want you to sit on your backside and just fist balls the other way. I want you to get your legs into it and drive the ball gap to gap, okay? Any questions? Meat and potatoes. Every, I'm telling, it's like a, 